Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashar. Welcome back to the channel. This is one of the most basic yet most requested topic. People have sent me emails they have requested in comments for this particular video. Even though I have created multiple videos on Visdals and its usage in your SOA services and all those links are added in the description. But in this video, we will focus on how you can create a Visdal from scratch. There are different ways in JDeveloper to create a Visdal and we will go through all of them in this video. Before we learn how to create a Visdal, it's important to brush up our knowledge on what is Visdal and its different elements. I'll keep it brief since we have already covered this in past videos. Visdal stands for Web Service Description Language. It describes a web service. In simpler terms, it's a blueprint of your SOAP service and it is written in XML. And these are the main elements within a visitor. So definition is the root element and then it contains type which has the schema location and then message which tells the request and response elements within the schema. And port type describes how many operations that visitor has and each operation's input and output elements. And then binding which binds operations to different SOAP styles. And then we have service which defines the location of our particular service. That which service it is deployed to, what is the port and how we can access that particular service. In Oracle SOA there is one more element named partner link that also gets added to Visdal. But that's just in SOA. But in general Visdal will have these five main elements types message and port type collectively creates an abstract visdal and it can be developed using jdeveloper and once you deploy this service to a server then visdal adds its binding and service location and becomes a concrete visdal i'll show you this as well in today's demo so now let's do the demo of various ways to create a visdal from scratch using jdeveloper so this is our jdeveloper where we have a blank application so application for demo so let's let's first create a project I'm going to create that as a blank empty composite. And now, before we create any visual, the base or the most important aspect of a service is creating a schema so that a visual will know or a service will know what can be the input and output of that particular service. So let's quickly create a schema, a very basic one. All right, so our schema is created. So it has a request element and a response element. Request element takes a input from the user and returns a result. That's a pretty basic schema structure. And now the first way or probably the easiest way to create a visual is by using inbuilt visual builder. And to do that, we'll open the composite and we'll insert a soap adapter. And here, as you can see this, there is a generate visual from schema. So we can click on this and now we can create a visual just like this. So and here it defines like what will be the port type. You can rename it anything you want. If this is the operation name, we can call it process or whatever the operation name that you want to give. And this will define whether your visual will be synchronous, asynchronous or one way. We have covered all these uh, transaction types in detail. So let's not waste more time on this. So let's create a synchronous visual. Under the input, I'll give the schema request element. And you can see part name is part one. This could also be anything. You can change it to whatever you like. It doesn't have much impact on the functioning. So click on OK. And here we are. We want the request element. Click on OK. And for the output, we want the response element. And the part name can be same. It could be part one or just part or whatever you want. Response element. OK. 
this is it and if you have certain fault elements as well we can add that fault uh, element here i'll click on ok and as you can see your visual has been created you don't have to go through the whole thing we can cancel it now but if you can see here your visual has been created it has an input it has an operation name process input input has a request message under which it is a request element and as you can see the entire mapping is done this visual in particular is called an abstract visual so if you come to the source as i mentioned in the beginning of this video we have type we have message we have reply message and we have the port type and that concludes an abstract visual if you want we can create we can use this visual create a service deploy it and then we'll check the visual it will have these three elements and it will also have the binding and the service element and that becomes a concrete visual that i'll do it once i'm done with all the different ways of creating a visual the second way is creating a visual from the very scratch and not using any of the inbuilt tool so for that let's right click on visuals there is this option called visual document so i'll say second way and you get an option whether you want to create a port type as of right now or not then you'll have to select the uh, service style whether it is uh, document or rpc we don't have to do that we can click on ok and as you can see we have a blank visual right now so if i come to source as you can see we don't have anything at all and this type under schema this is also nothing because there is no schema location as such so in order to work with this blank canvas or i would say the blank visual we can do is uh, we'll drag this visual demo.xsd to the message section here and as you can see in the design there is no change but if you go to the source you'll see that the schema has been imported under this so next thing what we can do is we can start adding messages uh, to this particular visitor so that we can come to design and we'll click on this message name let's say request message we'll click on ok similarly we can say response message and now under request message we can right click insert inside then part so in our previous visual that we created if you remember we created a part one but here we can simply create part or part one whatever you want it is element and we want the request element like this so click on ok and now under the response again we can call it part and under element it can be response element and we'll click on ok and we'll save let me move this visual to visual section uh, it somehow got created under this web inf so we can right click on this and refactor and move and we can simply move it to the visual folder And now if you come to source you'll see yep so now the reference is also correct so dot dot means one folder up under the schemas there is the schema folder so that warning is gone now so when we create a visual it's important to just check the location of the visual where it is creating because uh, jdeveloper has a tendency to add that visual file under the web content folder but that's okay that's not a big deal so now as you can see we have types and now we have message as well and the next or the final part is creating a port type so we can click on this plus icon here 
and we can give the port name let's say as operations and let's right click on this and now we can create operation so last we created process operation which was of a request and response type input was request and response and if we want to add false we can use this add fault option as well however we have created like a detailed series of like two three videos we have where we have created these faults created schemas with fault and we caught technical and business errors using this fault variable so if you are not familiar with this fault concept i highly recommend you to check that and i'll try to put that also into the description or maybe in the youtube card on the top of this video so let's click on ok so now if you see the entire Visual, I would say the abstract Visual has been created, and you can come here. You can check it is created, and the upside of using this method is that you get the option to create multiple operations. So if you want to create another operation, you can simply come here and create another operation. Let's say second process, and it could be again one way or asynchronous or synchronous let's keep it synchronous for simplicity purpose and okay so now we have two operations but when you used uh, the other method using the visual builder you could only create one operation at for one visual however you can always come here and create another one like this anyway so this is the second way of creating a visual and now let's talk about the third way of creating a visual for that it's kind of easy you can simply come here and create a people process here and under this you can create a web service of soap that means you are creating a visual you can keep it synchronous just to be aligned with the first and second here we can say third way and this is probably the easiest one because it will create a beeple process as well for you i'll select the request element in request and the response element in response so when we are creating a poc where you just want to quickly create a soap service and start working on people this is probably the most uh, time efficient and energy efficient way so the moment I click on OK, it will create Vistal. And let's click on OK. So if I clicked on OK, it created a SOAP adapter for me with operation process. It created a Beeple for me and it created this third way dot Vistal as well for me. So if you see this Vistal and the first one that we created, they're almost identical. You can check even in the code. Here we have operations, we have here. So if you check, we have types, message, and port type. And in the third way, if you see, we have type, we have message, and we have port type. And this is the partner link that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. So for SOA, it creates this partner link element as well, but that's not like a generic way how visual works and this partner link is nothing this is just this partner link that has been created so if i open our people this is a partner link that has been created anyways so now the third visual as you can see this is an abstract visual because it does not have any binding or it does not have any service element with the location of the visual so in order to get to that as i said we'll have to deploy it so that the service will have a certain location where anyone can access it so for that let me just simply add an assign here so that it returns something and very quickly what i'll do is because this has got nothing to do with what people does i'm going to simply result uh, map input to the result so whatever the input will be the service will return the same thing and let me deploy this now
I have already configured my standalone server here. So under the default, I'm going to deploy this service named Visdal Demo. And then we will check the third way dot Visdal once it is deployed and we'll see it will be the concrete Visdal and I'll, you'll see the difference. So let's finish it. That was really quick under four seconds the service got deployed so now let's go to the enterprise manager and check out this visual demo service all right so we have this visual demo under our enterprise manager default folder and in order to check the visual we can come here and this is the visual if we click on this it will open under uh, under your web browser and this as you can see this is the third way dot visual now if you see here documentation is a this element is simply just for the documentation it's not a mandatory one it's an optional partner link is the one that only soa generates and then we have types which has the schema location the visual demo schema that we created in the initial part of our demo then we have messages which tells the request and response element let me minimize this and then we have the port type which we created as the operation name is process and the input and output that we define so this till port type is part of the abstract and now these two has already been created making it a concrete visual that means now anyone who has access to this host and port can call this third uh, third way client service or this particular visual so this is the binding that got created and this is the service address location that got created so now we know what is the difference between an abstract visual and a concrete visual how you can create an abstract visual using different ways in j developer and I think this should cover everything that is there to know about Visual and creation of a Visual in J Developer. Thank you so much for your time. Take good care of yourselves and have a nice rest of the day.